Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Stargate, brought to us by Acclaim. Stargate, based on the film from the early 90s, follows the storyline of the movie pretty well. It's an action platformer that has some pretty cool elements, as well as a great soundtrack. To summarize the story pretty simply, you find a weird gate located in Egypt, and go to another world by going through the gate, that ends up being a place pretty much like, well, ancient Egypt. You find a group of people being oppressed by this big leader, using his troops in order to keep the people down, and you end up helping those people, arming them and helping them, and as well as saving your friends, in order to overthrow the evil ruler, as well as get back to your own world. So here we go with Stargate for the Super Nintendo. The game has three difficulties, as well as a password system that allows you to go to a certain parts of the game, and we're going to be playing on the normal difficulty. Then when you press start, you have a bit of storyline before you jump into the game. The game looks like a pretty typical action platformer. It has some really cool elements, including allowing you to fire in eight different directions, you have grenades that you can throw, as well as it has some pretty fluid animation, especially when it comes to being able to climb on different objects in the game. The game really isn't broken up into levels. Basically, like what you just saw, the cutscenes really dictate the storyline as well as give you all your missions for the game. Basically, getting a new cutscene will tell you whatever your next mission is basically gonna be. Besides the main stories of the game, you also have one side mission that you must complete in order to get the actual ending to the game, and that's collecting the pieces of the nuclear bomb. You ended up bringing this bomb over through the Stargate, and it got broken up into various different pieces. You must find all the pieces so you can actually use it on the final boss's ship in order to actually destroy it. If you're unable to find all the pieces though, you just get a very generic one screen ending and the game basically tells you you didn't do good enough in order to actually earn the ending. There's a pretty good variety of different types of enemies throughout the game, and you'll be seeing a lot of the same ones though throughout all parts of the game. Learning how to use your fire to your advantage to help you take out enemies, whether they're on the ground or flying up in the air, will be key in order to surviving. Another key thing also is since enemies usually will take a decent amount of bullets, standing and necessarily fighting every enemy isn't usually the best strategy. If you're able to bypass enemies and not waste the ammo, grenades, or anything on them, that's usually the best way to go. Our first mission in the game is getting supply boxes. I've been running around all inside of this giant cave finding all the boxes. Once I've located all the supply boxes, I'm able to leave and continue on to the next part, moving a little bit farther now into the desert itself. There's tons of different items to collect throughout the game, including upgrades to your ammo, as well as you can pick up extra grenades, as of course, also different power-ups, including being able to replenish your health. After finding all the supply boxes, the gates to the city are open. Once inside, you get another little cutscene telling basically what you're going to be doing inside here. Inside the city, our goal is to find the four elders. There's three elders located in the main part of the city, and one located inside of one of the buildings, so you'll have to enter inside one of the places. There's a ton of different doors to enter throughout the game, most of which we won't have to actually enter. However, there will be some key ones that you must enter in order to find different objects. Introduced in the city for the first time are the Horus Guards. These guys are one of the most common enemies throughout the game, and they take a good amount of bullets to take out. The best way to actually beat them is by using your grenades. 
However, if you're able to get him in some situations, you can keep hitting him with the gun over and over again, and their moves will keep missing you. After grabbing this second of the elders here, go inside this door just below. Inside here, located near the bottom of it, is the third elder. Of course, while working your way back out of here, be sure to take out some enemies so you don't lose too much health, and pick up the item supplies along the way. There's an extra life located in the lower right corner, and these are, of course will always come in handy. Break open this door with your gun and then jump up in order to save the last elder. Just watch out for the guard blocking your way in order to get to him. After you save the elder, you can either go right down or go up instead, working your way across this balance beam in order to get another extra life located at the end of the path. Then just head backwards. Then just go to the bottom of the area where we saved the last elder in order to move on. Now we're outside the city back in the desert. Move ahead a little bit in order to continue the story. Enter inside the second cave you end up coming across, and then go to the bottom of it in order to get another cutscene with Kowalski. After the scene, start working your way back out, watching out for some enemies along, of course, the path. By now, you're probably getting used to the climbing mechanics in the game, which definitely takes some getting used to. Once back outside into the main desert area, just continue over to the right and enter inside the next cave that you end up coming across. Inside here, we're going to be finding three soldiers, as well as the first piece of the nuclear device. Thankfully, the finest piece of the nuclear device is located right next to one of the soldiers we end up saving. Since most of the caves, of course, look the same as far as their basic design, finding your way through can sometimes be a little bit difficult, but don't worry, there's not that many branching paths located inside any area of this game, so you usually can figure out what path you didn't end up taking, and if you need to backtrack, it shouldn't be too difficult. Be sure to drop down here and save the second soldier as well as pick up a piece of the nuclear device, which is represented by that cam with the nuclear symbol on it. There's seven of these total in the game, and this is the first of the seven that we need to collect. After getting past one of the guards, climb up this rope and then go over here in order to save the next guard, then just continue off to the right and exit the cave. Doing so, you'll now be in another set of ruins. Inside of here, we have to work our way across these rings for the first time. Jumping in the game can be sometimes difficult with the momentum, but work your way across the rings in order to make it to the platform on the right. Located in this part of the ruins is the last soldiers that we need to save. There's actually three soldiers located in this area, but you only need to save two in order to advance. Be careful of the ground during a lot of these seconds because pieces of them will break apart and you'll end up falling down to a platform below. You'll notice in the background that you have these weird rock formations that you actually can climb up. Climb up to this one and be sure to collect the items as well as save the soldier on the left. Once you've done so, drop down, go through the door, and then climb up the next set of weird rocky formation on the wall. 
Here, I end up breaking through the ground, land safely on the platform below, and save the next soldier. With him saved, I now head to the very bottom and enter inside the next door. Inside here, watch out for the guards, and just collect the items along the way as you're making your way up. One of the weird things in the game is when you're moving, if you stop in order to actually hit enemies, or you just end up running into an enemy that stops you in your tracks, you end up getting stuck there even if you're holding the left or right button still. You actually have to let go of the directional pad, then press it again in order to actually continue moving. After another conversation, enter the door just to the left of the guy. You don't have to save anyone during this segment, but try to keep your health up because we're getting ready for the first boss fight of the game. Thankfully, there's a decent amount of power-ups to collect throughout this, including some wide fire for your gun, as well as a bunch of other grenades and stuff that you can use against the boss. Having grenades is a key essential to help you defeat the boss more easily. Located down here is a singular door, and it's time to battle Anubis. While Anubis is the first boss of the game, the strategy against him is going to be the same the other times we actually have to do battle with Anubis. And don't worry, you'll enjoy it because you have to do it two more times in the game besides the actual final boss, which works a little bit like Anubis as well. Mainly the fact that every time you end up hitting him or he ends up doing a move, he teleports to another part of the screen. Trying to guess where he teleports is sometimes difficult, but whenever you're able to get him in your sight, be sure to either hit him with your gun, or more effectively, start throwing your grenades at him. Thankfully, sometimes you'll be able to launch multiple grenades at him at a time before he ends up disappearing. This first form of him ends up giving you the most amount of time in order to consistently keep hitting him with those grenades. Every time you hit him, you can see that you do a decent amount of damage to him overall. He has a few different moves he ends up doing. He either ends up sending out this weird block-like robot that moves and bounces around the room to hit you, or he fires out one of his different laser shots. These can be a little bit difficult to dodge, but thankfully, unless they keep hitting you over and over again, won't do too much damage. Hanging on to the sides of one of the platforms seems to be a good area to be in order to keep hitting Anubis with several grenades. As long as you learn how the directional pad works in the game as far as your multiple direction shots, you shouldn't have too much trouble being able to hit him even if you stand still for a decent amount of the battle. After defeating Anubis for the first time, you'll be back outside and head over to the right for another conversation. Once the conversation is over, go back into the previous room where you actually battled Anubis and go into the door at the very bottom. This isn't necessary, but it's a good way to resupply after your fight with Anubis. There's lots of different grenades to pick up and plenty of health pickups as well to replenish your health bar all the way back up to full. After you're done collecting all the items, go back into the door where we ended up battling Anubis and take the elevator back up and go back to where that woman was standing that we just had the conversation with.
Just past where she was standing is another door. Head inside here. Inside this area, start working your way around all the ruins, including a few places that will end up breaking open. Follow the path in this set of ruins, and work your way down to the bottom area. When you work your way all the way down, you'll end up seeing a boy who ends up walking inside one of the walls. Follow him inside of the wall in order to move on to the next area. This is the first time you end up getting a choice between two different doors. One of them takes you to an unnecessary area that we don't need to travel through, and the other one takes us directly to where we want to go. In this case, it's going to be the left door that you want to enter. Inside here, you just have a normal big room that you'll have to go through and start working your way up, but once you reach the top of it, you'll be at the next spot and be able to continue the main part of the game. During this segment, our goal is just to find the correct door in order to actually locate her. As she's disguised as one of the elders, you'll find other elders throughout the area, but they aren't the correct one that we need to find. They will raise their arms up in the air like you just saved them, but our main goal is to head down here and enter inside this door, being sure to pick up the health upgrade to the left before entering inside the door. Once inside here, start climbing your way up. Nothing really new here, the same types of beetles and normal bugs that you fight throughout the entire game are located inside here, and eventually you'll be able to reach it to the top. Once you make it to the top, have another conversation before moving on. After the short conversation, pick up all the item upgrades you can get throughout the area and then work your way back down and enter the door we entered in order to get into this place. Our goal now is just, well, to exit the city area. To do so, we'll have to take some paths and areas that we hadn't already taken throughout this place. There's also the introduction of a new type of enemies throughout this area, so you'll have to be a little bit careful. There's also plenty of the normal guards that are going to try to keep shooting at you throughout. One of the new enemies that are introduced in this area are the Osiris Guards. These guards fly overhead, flapping their wings in order to stay elevated, and they also drop bombs consistently down on top of you. After a short conversation, you'll be back out in the desert, being chased down by an Osiris Guard in the sky dropping tons of bombs on you. If you keep running though, you'll be able to avoid most of the bombs that get dropped. You'll also be introduced to these cave doors that you actually have to shoot the symbol above the door in order to actually open up the door itself. Hit the first one, then enter inside the door. Once inside here, be sure to collect a couple of the items, including the next piece of the nuclear device. Once you have the nuclear device in hand, just work your way back out and exit outside back to the main desert. Continue on throughout the desert, doing your best to avoid all the explosions, and then have another conversation before entering the next cave. Inside here, you'll be introduced to another type of background and all. This is much more scientific and definitely more futuristic than anything we've seen in the game thus far. Climb up here and be sure to hit the switch in the upper right corner in order to save the guy.
ride the platform to the door and then enter it to go up the stairs and back out into the desert. Once back into the desert though, climb up the mountain to the right of here in order to actually get the next segment to go. You'll be picked up by one of the giant gliders and introduced to one of the two flying segments of the game. The first of the two flying segments has you having to take out 20 different guards. This is definitely difficult getting used to the controls right away as up is down and down is up in similar typical flying fashion like many other flying segments and flying video games in general. You have two means of fire though. You have your normal machine gun like fire as well as you do have bombs as well. These bombs will actually home in on enemies if they're on screen and take them out. You can see thankfully the counter of how many more you need to destroy being in the center of the screen and don't worry there's no more than that amount on screen. But at the very start with 20 enemies currently on the map it can get very hectic and your shields can get drained rather quickly. That's where the guys on the ground come in handy. Destroying them will give you different power-ups, whether or not they're fuel, shields, or they end up giving you more bombs. Be sure anytime you end up seeing them, if you're anywhere low on your health, to destroy them so you can end up picking up extra health or pick up other power-ups as well. This is definitely one of those kind of free-for-all-like moments, and getting used to this can definitely take some time. You can slow down a bit, you can lower your altitude to help you get past some enemies, as well as you can do sharp turns left and right with the L and R buttons. Mastering these controls, like I said, will take time, but once you have them under control, you should be able to take out at least most of the enemies. Thankfully though, if you lose a life, you don't have to redo all 20 in one life, you just pick right back up with the amount that you've already destroyed still gone. After defeating the gliders, you'll be right back where you were. Just drop down for another conversation. Here you'll have a choice once again between two doors, one taking us directly where we want to go and the other one taking us through a side area. Choose the one on the right in order to go exactly where we want to go. Through here just climb up like normal picking up some health upgrades along the way and then enter the door at the top right corner. Inside this area of the city our main goal is going to be destroying these summoning guys. These guys, of course, won't end up being able to damage you since they're trying to conjure up the thing above their head. However, there's plenty of other guards trying to get in your way here. It only takes a shot or two in order to end up destroying the guys, and they're pretty easy to find throughout the area. So even though you may have to do a little bit of backtracking here and there in case you choose one path that ends up not having the guy you want, it's really not too overall difficult. The real key to this area, as well as pretty much all the areas in the game, is just making sure that you keep your health up and use grenades wisely so you can end up destroying enemies when they get in your way. However, if you're like me, you like to conserve your grenades, so the best way to deal with this is shoot a guy a couple of times with your normal gun and then when he disappears or retracts back into the wall, use that opportunity to run by him. Stop inside this door at any point if you actually end up needing a little bit of extra health because there's an easy health access just to the right. Once we grab that though, we exit right back out into the main part of the city. Continue through busting down any wooden door that may get in your way. If you end up running into the door located in the bottom here, and you see that it's still closed, that means you still have guys to find. Like I said, it can get really hectic with multiple guards on screen at once, and sometimes your best strategy may be just take some damage and run through them. Thankfully, there's another guy up here, as well as an extra life to help you out, especially if you've been losing a lot of health during this segment. Once you've destroyed the guys on the top, grabbing an extra life, go back down to the bottom and turn inside here. 
This is a guy I always end up missing and why I forgot to actually come in here at first because he's located inside here. He's the only guy that you need to destroy who's actually located inside of one of the rooms. Thankfully, he's easy to get to and there isn't too much trouble along the way, but also key here is a nuclear device that's located at the very top of the screen. Be sure to get both the device and destroy the guy before exiting back out and moving on. Once back out into the main city, just continue over to the right, and the door that was once sealed will now be open, allowing us to continue. The Elder ends up giving you an herb that you can give to your army mate right in the next room in order to save him. Once you're done with those cutscenes though, continue on through another set of ruins. This area isn't too difficult as your goal is just to get through the area, but you'll come to some sealed doors along the way. And in order to open them up, you'll have to hit some wall switches on the walls by using your gun in order to actually open them up. After opening up the door at the bottom here, enter inside and order the battle Anubis for the second time in the game. This fight of course is very similar to the first battle with Anubis. He'll be teleporting all along the screen and hanging off of different areas and getting to the right places in order to hit him with grenades is the key to end up defeating him. He has the same basic attack so if you were able to get used to them in the first fight, you shouldn't have too much trouble with them here. The only difference here though of course is the different type of terrain that you have to fight him on having three levels to go to instead of just two. Just like the first time defeating Anubis, he ends up escaping, so we have one more battle to go with him. Once he's defeated, the door to the right of his chamber will end up opening and you can climb up, collect a couple items, and get another cutscene. Our next mission is to collect 8 sets of spears in order to arm the rebels. In order to do so, you'll have to go around this giant room collecting a whole bunch of them, opening up some panels on the walls so you're able to actually get to all of them. Of course, with 8 items to collect, it may seem a little overwhelming, even for a game that has a lot of collecting. However, it's not too bad, even with a lot of enemies on screen, they're pretty out in the open for the most part. Only maybe one or two of them will you really have to do a whole lot of backtracking in order to locate where they were. The rule of thumb is basically if you see a ramp, just take the ramp all the way to the end and you'll probably run into one of the sets of speakers. Thankfully, there's also a decent amount of other items along the way. If you end up running into one of the force fields blocking you from going into a certain area, that means you ended up missing one of the panels on the walls that you need to shoot at in order to get rid of the force field. Just be sure if you end up finding that panel that you backtrack so you can get into where the spears were then located. The weirdest thing though is also using the rope like here in order to climb along the ceiling, since we haven't used it in pretty much any other part of the game at this point, Finding that and realizing that, oh wait, I have to actually use that to climb across, is one of those moments that you may be baffled for just a second or two until you realize, jumping up, you can actually climb along them. Now. 
After climbing up the very long ladder here, battle with this guy on the top here as I make my way over to the far right. It takes a lot of shots with a normal gun in order to take out one of the Osiris guards. That's why usually the best strategy is either just to avoid them all together, or use your grenades to help you out. Two grenades it takes in order to actually defeat one of the Osiris guards. After collecting that set of spears, continue back around, work your way back over, and eventually we'll finally be able to make it out of this area. Now that we have all 8 spears, it's time to arm the rebels themselves, and how do you do that? Well, run through the desert, find 8 random guys throwing it throughout the desert, and hand them a spear. This is a pretty easy area to get through overall, even with a lot of enemies. Just run through, be sure that you take both the top and bottom paths. It can be a little bit weird in order to sometimes see that there actually is a bottom path, because the way the desert is set up. But, as long as you're able to realize that, you should have no problem finding the soldiers along the way. Once you end up delivering, though, all the spears, you end up running into the kid located right next to one of these rock formations. Next up, though, is another flying segment, but this one's a lot easier than the first. Our goal here, though, is just to keep our fuel up long enough so that we can make it to the end. It can be a little bit of a pain because your fuel runs out twice or three times as fast as it did during the fighting segment of the glider part. However, since there's tons of different fuel to pick up throughout the area, and memorizing it is actually pretty easy, you shouldn't have too much trouble making it through this area. Also, if you're like myself and not a huge fan of these flying segments overall, thankfully though, this is the last one that you have to do in the game. After traveling for a while, you'll get the mission successful screen, and you'll be able to move on to the next part of the desert, landing where all your soldiers are getting ready to go into the final areas. Move along the desert, taking out normal enemies, and open up the first door that you end up coming to. Inside here, our goal is to run around and destroy all the computer systems that are set up throughout. It's pretty easy to find them all, but once you end up destroying the few that are located in here, then backtrack and head back out into the desert. Once back out in the desert, watch out for all the dive bombing Osiris guards and Horus guards just blocking your way, collect all the extra health, and continue to the very end of the desert segment, shooting open another cave entrance in order to enter. Inside this area though is a typical cave-like segment that we've been seeing throughout the game. Thankfully, this area is pretty straightforward and nothing that we haven't already seen, and our goal is just to make it to the end of the area to find the secret entrance in order to get into the final dungeon of the game. But don't worry, we still have a pretty good amount to go. Be sure to grab the extra life located on the far right here before continuing over to the left. Once you climb up this rope, talk to the guy for another cutscene before you enter the door to the left of him. Thank you. 
Inside this area, there's a bunch more computers for us to find and destroy. Get used to climbing up these types of ladders located on the walls. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky if the ladder is set up just slightly above where you can normally jump, because grabbing onto them can sometimes be a pain. It'll look like you'll be able to grab onto it, but you'll keep messing it a few times until eventually he ends up grabbing onto it and climbing up. Thankfully, the path is pretty straightforward while making your way through. You may run into a door along the way, but just ignore it for now and continue over to the right, where you'll end up getting a cutscene, but right where the cutscene is, is also another piece of the nuclear device, so be sure to grab that before continuing. Once the cutscene is over, you have the nuclear device, enter the door to go to the next segment. Inside here, just continue what we've been doing, running through the area and destroying any computer that we end up running into. Thankfully, pretty simple stuff, no new enemies are introduced here except maybe for those little flying robots that can get a little bit annoying, but thankfully, if you fall Anubis twice like we already have, these are the same types of blocks and robots that he's been throwing out throughout every fight that we have with him. After making our way around, we come to another door, enter inside of it just to continue on inside of the chamber area. While all these rooms basically do look the same, we are making progress, trust me. Ignore the ladder above us and continue over to the right, dropping down to the very, very bottom of the screen. Once down here, ignore the door that we end up seeing down here and just go all the way over to the right. After destroying the computer and picking up the items, then start backtracking back over to the left and climb back up. Once up here, jump over to the spike pit over to the right, shoot another computer before trying to grab onto the wall here and climb up this ladder. There's going to be an Osiris guard like normal trying to drop bombs on you, but thankfully you should be able to take it out with your normal gun. Watch out for this Horus guard that's hiding in between the columns and the wall, destroy a couple more computers and exit out of the screen. You'll come to a brand new area of the game. Inside this area, our goal is actually to destroy these containers that are located as part of the background. Because they are on the background itself, they kind of look like they just blend in and you probably won't even notice them at first. However, when you shoot them, you can see that they end up blowing up and you'll see smoke start to come out of them. Your goal here though, of course, is just to run through and destroy all of them in order to open the door to the next segment. There's a couple areas where you're going to have to crouch down in order to actually continue moving through. Unfortunately here, I forget to shoot the one that's located all the way to the right there, so even though I continue on to the left and make my way through, I will have to backtrack in a few seconds in order to end up going back and end up getting that one that I missed. After I end up climbing all the way up to the very top, I realize, of course, that there was the one I missed, so I end up starting my backtrack here. Thankfully, 
Thankfully, though, you don't have to backtrack too far, and once it's destroyed, I can work my way back up to the top of this area. The next segment is an area that contains a bunch of different doors, and we only need to really enter one in order to continue to the throne room. However, there's another door that you must enter in order to find a piece of a nuclear device. It's probably the toughest piece of a nuclear device to find on your own, since you don't actually have to enter this room for any other reason in the game. Once you hit the wall panel here to disable one of the force fields that you'll need to bypass in just a little bit, entering to the door just left of it. Inside here is the room that you don't actually have to go into except to find the nuclear device, and because of that, like I said, this is the toughest one to find in the game. There's a good amount of enemies here, especially the little robots that are trying to get in your way, but just like always, there's plenty of health items as well. Watch out for the Horus Guard here, climb up here, run over to the left, and drop down in order to find the piece of the device. I have to say that while playing the game, this is probably the one most people would end up missing along their initial playthrough of the game. It also doesn't help that the only guide I think available for the game doesn't mention that you're supposed to come in here and get that one. Once out in the main area, we continue on through this very large room. Thankfully, we disabled the force fields, and now we're able to continue on. While there is a bunch of other doors and paths throughout this area, since the end is the only one that we need to go through in order to get to the throne room, figuring out where to go and the direct paths is pretty simple. If you end up running into a force field, that means you have to backtrack a little bit and find another switch on the wall to disable the next force field. You also should have plenty of grenades at this point in the game, so you should be able to use them to help you out, defeating the last bits of guards that you may need to. Over here, take out the guard and shoot the panel on the wall, climb up of course to grab some extra health since I'm getting pretty low on health in this room. Once over to the right is the door that we need to enter, but don't go in there yet, instead go back down to the left get past another one of those guard statues, and grab the next piece of the nuclear device. We have only one more piece to grab, and it's right near the final door of the game. Inside the next room, immediately grab the health over to the right, because you probably take a little bit of a beating throughout the previous room. Work your way down using your grenades to take out the Horus guards on each of the panels. At the very bottom here, destroy the computer and then enter inside the door. In the next room, just work your way through, using grenades whenever you need to because there is a decent amount of them to pick back up throughout. Eventually, you'll come to a moving platform. Stay on top of this moving platform and it'll take you right to the next boss chamber. The boss chamber is a rematch against Anubis. Go over to the right to the next elevator and this is where it'll trigger Anubis to show up. This fight is the final fight with him, and he has a larger area as far as the left and right distance is concerned in order to teleport. So he's able to use this to his advantage to sometimes be completely off screen when he ends up spawning. However, the same strategy we've been using against him is still applying, though he's a lot faster this time around so you have a lot less time in order to hit him with grenades most of the time.
He loves spawning multiples of the robots all around. And don't worry about using your grenades, because even though we have the final boss coming up right after this, we have plenty of opportunity to pick up some extra grenades that we may have used during this fight. So you don't have to be too stingy with the grenades. Once Anubis is finally taken care of, you can go back over to the right to the elevator, which will now start moving. It'll travel upwards, allowing us to go to these four doors. The upper right door is the one we need to take, but down below is the final piece of the nuclear device. We can now get the best ending to the game. It's now time to battle Ra, the final boss of the game, and he has two different forms. He spawns around the room very similar to Anubis, firing out a spread shot of lightning bolts everywhere, as well as he summons these little pink orbs that travel around, end up hitting you, and end up sending you to fly around the room half the time. Thankfully though, the little pink orbs can be destroyed easily with your normal gunfire. Usually I like to stay on the elevator here on the right side and just keep moving up and down on the elevator, getting the best opportunities to fire my grenades at Ra, using the different directional pad buttons in order to help me throw the grenade the best way possible in order to actually make contact with Ra. If at any point you end up getting too low on health, or you end up getting too low on grenades, you can pick up all the health throughout the room, and for grenades, you can go to the very bottom of the screen and head to the right, and you'll enter a secret room that has tons of extra grenades. Thankfully though, I have plenty of grenades though going into the fight, so I didn't have to worry too much about that. Once you deliver the final hit to Ra's first form, he goes to his skeletal form. This form is a lot tougher, however, there is some exploit you can do to it including hanging on a platform near him and just keep throwing grenades over and over again at him. He'll keep using his whip to hit you and it will do damage, but as long as you have a decent amount of health left, you should be able to keep hitting him over and over again without losing too much health. The problem is though, getting him stuck in these positions sometimes can be a bit difficult, and since his laser moves can do so much damage to you, you may need to collect some health around the room to help you out. The worst part, of course, about this fight is since the room is so big, getting him right where you need him sometimes can be difficult. However, once you deliver the final hit, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Stargate. So there you guys have it, Stargate for the Super Nintendo. This game also came out on the Game Gear, Sega Genesis, and a few other consoles, with the Sega Genesis version being very similar to the SNES version, though this is the one I'm much more familiar with. 
The game ends up being a pretty decent movie-licensed title for the Super Nintendo, being very reminiscent of other action platform games on the console around the same time, including the Terminator games, but also especially the Super Star Wars games. And while the Stargate franchise would end up spawning from this, including many different television programs and other series, the original Stargate film is probably my favorite in the entire series. And while this game of course is pretty far from being the best action platform available for the Super Nintendo, it's the memories I have attached to the game that make it so special. And I have to admit, even as a kid, I wasn't necessarily able to find all the nuclear pieces without using a code to get me to the last area with all the pieces currently intact. Because there was nothing more disappointing than beating the game and working so many days and hours on it, finally making it to the end just to get a black screen that said you didn't do good enough in order to actually get the ending. And as the credits wrap up for Stargate, it then goes back to the main menu and you can start the game all over again. However, with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching and of course, I hope you enjoyed.